I remember years ago when I was learning uh, about the prosperity so-called message. People, and I know because stuff that I overheard, be careful little what you hear. You know, if you keep your ears open, you can hear people say stuff, you know, walking by. And, and, uh, and if you didn't have a nice car, uh, people figure, ah, he, he's not spiritual. So one time we bought a, a nice used car, you know. We bought a nice used car. So somebody saw it and they thought, oh, 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 this brother and his family are doing good. No, it's still old, still old broke me. It's just that the car is nice. Because God gave me wisdom on how to get that car for my family. And it was nice. It was a Jordy. But it was an old car that looked nice. And I would wash it and take care of it and wax and whack, you know, take good care of it. And it looked nice. So people thought I was successful. But uh, be content with the, with the car you have. I know I had lots of clunkers in my life. And some of them I wanted to push over a cliff, but then I said, no, nah, it's better than walking. So, uh, lands, things, anything. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. If you could turn there. Let's see, that's to the right. 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, verse 6. I want to read some verses. He says, now godliness, godliness. With contentment, that means with being satisfied in life, independent of external circumstances. Remember, that's what we said contentment was. Not godliness with contentment, is great gain. Godliness, serving God, doing the things of God, honoring God, with contentment is great gain. Now, one, one Greek scholar, his name is Klingensmith, says it's great prosperity. He even said, it's good business. So in the practical area, godliness with contentment, he's saying, it's good business. It's a good business position to have. He said, it's great prosperity. Why? Verse 7 says, for we brought nothing into this world. Did any of you bring anything into the world when you were born in the hospital or wherever it was. Some of you may have been born in a taxi. There have been many people have been born in taxi cabs, a couple in police cars, some in the bush. I mean, when, it, when she's gonna have a baby, brother, she's gonna have it. And you never know, the baby's not waiting on anybody. Okay, so you never know. He's, so obviously, we brought nothing into this world and it's certain, it's absolutely certain, it's a fact. We can carry nothing out. You brought nothing in, and you can't take it with you. Many people have amassed fortunes, and I've read the testimonies. And they've made some nice uh, little rhymes about it. Some of them are humorous, little, little things. But you can't take it with you. Like the guy that had all his money put in his coffin. Uh, probably a famous story. Maybe you've read it. And he had a lot of the stuff. Okay? So one day they had exhumed the body for something, uh, something in the family, lawsuits. So when they exhumed, opened the coffin, they were in one diamond. And he had, you know, like the pharaohs, all the fortune. They opened it, they won one day. So who took it? Nobody knows. And every the guys, you, you, ever, you ever been to a funeral and you go to the cemetery? You know how they lowered it? There's guys that do it. They lower it in and they, they, maybe it was them. I don't know who did it. But it grave robbers or whatever, but he didn't have a dime left in it. Somebody got it. So you can't take anything with you. And everybody knows that, yet the Holy Spirit decided to put that in the Word of God. He's making a point to us, to believers. He said, it's certain, you can't carry anything out. And then he says, and having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. With these we shall be satisfied. Do you have food and clothing? You all look well dressed to me. Yeah. You got food and clothing? <gasps> Did anybody here walk to church today? You know, in a lot of countries, that people have to walk miles. Sometimes in the mud because it rained a lot or whatever. Sometimes it's dangerous. Sometimes the government is, doesn't want you to do it. And uh, food and clothing. Got a car? Anybody here have a refrigerator? Yeah. Wow, is there anything in it? Oh, you guys are really prospering. I mean, that's true. You have uh, some kind of pantry with some food in it, some stuff. Really, do you go shopping regularly? You know, you buy stuff off the shelf. My God, what are we complaining about? 
The Word of God says, having food and clothing, with these we shall be content or satisfied. I learned how to be content. I'm rich. So even in the practical areas, what are we talking about? Oh, the, the, I have a relative, he got a real big house. He got a new car, gets regular new car. Good for him. He, I'm for him. But you're rich too. Don't compare yourself to him. I don't know how he got his stuff. Some of them aren't even saved, but they got stuff. So what? I'm saved. I got Jesus and I got stuff. I got a jacket. I got shoes. I got clothes. I want what do I want? I'm content. I'm satisfied with what I have. Yeah, but I wish I had that Gucci suit like Brother Big has on TV. <laughs> he got that that uh, thirty-five, four thousand dollar suit. I need that. No, no, no. I, I don't need that. I would be embarrassed to wear that thing. So his clothes, just if shoes, were worth more than my car. You notice I bought uh, my daughter-in-law's car. She went to heaven, uh, Jim had an extra car. I had sold my truck. It got to be, it was too big for me and I, I didn't need it anymore. But I needed something long, so in case I had to carry stuff, it was a perfect car. So I, they sold me my daughter Nicole's car. So it's still in the family, yeah. <laughs> okay? You see it parked out, it's nice, it's in nice shape and everything. Man, to me that's like a brand new car. That's like if I went and I bought a brand new car. I'm content. I'm happy. I'm happy with the truck. Believe it or not, with some of my old cars, even though I wanted to, to throw them off a cliff, I really was satisfied with them. Why? Because of the Lord. The Lord gives you that stuff. Amen. The Lord gives you the wisdom to understand what, what the other guy just can't understand. I don't know why. But in uh, the third thing here out of uh, 1 Timothy 6, uh, I said I was going to read verses 6 through 8. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay? Uh, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out, and having food and raiment, we shall be content. I did read those. Okay? So, I said that we will look at the practical areas. The area number one was the size of your pocket, or your paycheck, rather. Area number two was for your finances, houses, lands, cars, stuff, things. Area number three, position at the job. Be content with the title you have at work. I remember for listening for years with some of the prosperity teachers, almost all of them, big name, small name, and then many pastors picking it up. Well, believe God so you can be the CEO. Believe, if you believe God and you give your tithes regularly, you can be the president of the company. Maybe God don't want you to be the president of the company. Maybe he wants you to be working in the stock room. I remember my, uh, a job when I was working in the stock room for an uh, automobile club back in 1907 sometime. I was very, very young. I started, I, and I'd go by. Uh, sometimes we, we fill the orders, you know, papers and stuff for the, for the auto club. They sell insurance and that stuff. And, uh, and you could see the biggest guy had the biggest office. And, and, and you can see, see the importance of the position by, because that's the headquarters of the Automobile Club of Southern California, over there on Figueroa Street, and that's, what, that's where I work. So uh, the, you could tell how important the guy was by the size of the office. The big office was for the big cheese, like Pastor Mirko would say, the big kahuna. And, uh, and then uh, as the office went down, the title went down. My office was the closet. <laughs> but I started there. And I wasn't, wow, I wish I had a job. Thank God God had given me the wisdom to not, not to this. Uh, see, at the time, I hadn't heard some of these prosperity preachers. They're always, you got your eye on the top spot. No, maybe the Lord wants you there where you can witness to all those guys, to all the people. So the position at work, be content where you are. Just be faithful in it. If God, I can't stress this enough. If God, if God, forget that dumb prosperity preaching that says, if you're faithful, you get the promotion. No, maybe God wants to keep you there because he needs you there. Leave promotion in his hands. You do the faithful part and leave promotion in his hands. That's good preaching. I should sell that. I should just sell that. 
Here's another thing, ethnicity. Ethnicity. Be content with the race you are. When I grew up, everybody wanted to be white. I grew up in New York City, Puerto Rican kid. I came to California because my mother moved out here, and then everybody here was Mexican. So you could be a Puerto Rican kid, you could be a Mexican, you could be a black, everybody to, wanted to be white. Now, nobody wants to be white. <laughs> now the white folk want to be Mexican, they want to be Puerto Rican, or they want to be black or something else. This is crazy. I don't care what race you are. Be content with what God made you. Amen. Well, what is Jesus? I don't know. We'll find out when we see him face to face. <laughs> when he said, Jesus, what are you? He's going to look at you. That's a stupid question. You know? We're all his kids. I don't know this thing about race and God. and uh, Come on. We know Jesus in back when he ministered in the streets of uh, Israel some 2,000 years ago, he was a Jewish guy. Okay? So what are the Jews? I don't know. They're Jewish, man. That's it. Is that a race? Is that an ethnicity? Is that a religion? It's probably all three. They've been around for about 5,000 years. I don't think anybody else can trace their history 5,000 years. I have read that a number of times. So it's, it's all those. It's a race. It's a religion. It's an ethnicity of its own. So, be content with whatever you are. <laughs> That's the way God made you. That's how he loves you. Just be yourself. Stop trying to be somebody else. Amen. Be proud of who you are in the right way. Yes. Like, I, pride is a sin. It's an ugly thing. But there's a good pride. I'm proud. I can be proud of my family. I can be proud of this church. I can be proud to be an American. That's okay. That's all good. I'm happy for it. And I'll do whatever I can for my, for my church, for my family, and for my nation. Then there's that ugly pride. I'm not talking about that kind of pride. So, that was ethnicity. And this is the fifth one. Your physical makeup. Be content with who you are. When I was a young guy, I always, uh, when I started playing a lot of basketball, I said, man, wouldn't it be great if I was about 6'6", six, 6'7"? Six, six, Why was that? So I could dump the ball on my friends, that's all. I didn't want to turn around and dunk on him. Boom. Will Chamberlain was my hero. I don't know if you remember, but everybody talks about the gold. Is the gold, this is just an opinion. Is the gold uh, uh, Michael Jordan? Is it uh, Irvin Johnson? Uh, is it Kobe Bryant? Super, super players. But come on, the gold is Will Chamberlain. Sorry. He's the greatest that ever played. He was the most dominant force that ever played. I saw him play a lot. I saw all these guys play. This is one man's opinion okay one <laughs> one man's opinion so I just thought you know because he would turn around and just dunk on folk even guys his size he just he's more powerful than them more gifted than them so uh, I had to learn to accept me the way I am and then guys there's some guys that are muscular you know they have they have these uh, uh is it Adonis Adonis I don't know who he is some kind of Greek thing you know with all the muscles and uh, I never had that uh, and we'll leave that there. <laughs> See, that's my wife. She's laughing. But then, you know, yeah, yeah. just, just be happy with who you are. Yes. Come on, we make such a big yes. deal. Girls with this, uh, what is it, bulimia? And I forget what the other one is. Eating disorders. The enemy takes advantage of people. For, for years, everybody wanted to be a Barbie doll. Yeah. A lot of operations and making all girls seem the same. I mean, w women are beautiful and, 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 and from every race, every color, every ethnic group. God just created women beautiful, you know. But they shouldn't all look the same. Then they'd be robots, you know. And people have struggled with all these things. And it's sad when Christians struggle. I can see you want to be the best you can be. But be content with who you are. Okay. I had to learn to be content with my height. Duncan wasn't for me. <laughs> I remember having a couple of dreams where I was dunking on folk. Especially Dave Brewer, you know, where he was competing against him. Yeah, and, and by the way, his favorite player was Will Chamberlain too. But he was, he was very powerful. He could just back people down. Yeah. Even at his height, he was, a good, he was a good athlete. He backed them down and turned around and he could shoot. He'd make a lot of points that way. I didn't have that physical strength, but I was quicker. I could shoot outside. So we would usually pair up together. We usually were in, um, on, on the same team. 
but uh, neither one of us grew to be seven foot one, 300 pounds like Will. We just couldn't make it, okay? Uh, so be content with who you are. Let me, let me just about finish with, with this. I, I, I talked about uh, early on the secret to contentment. Now I want to give you the foundational secret. The, here's the found, and I, I, I want to end with this thought. And I'm going to read a, a scripture to you to end with this thought. The foundational secret of contentment. And it's, it's in one verse. It's in Philippians 4.13. Okay? I'm getting this from Philippians 4.13. Where he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Powerful verse. I can do all things. And it's the things that God wants me to do. That's the qualifier. Not just all, anything that I, the context is, I can do all things that, that the Holy Spirit leads me to do. I can do it, but it has to be through Christ because the Holy Spirit will, 